Good morning. My name is Linwood Bird, and I'm the Deacon of the Week, and I'd like to welcome you to, uh, I hope, a happy and cool Palm Sunday. Uh, <laughs> somebody said it was spring, but I, I don't think it's gotten here yet. Hadn't for me anyway. I'm getting more cold natured the older I get. But uh, welcome to First Baptist Church. We're so glad that you're here. If you're visiting with us today, uh, I hope you have been greeted already. Church members, if you see a visitor and you haven't greeted them, please do so before they leave today. And uh, if you're visiting, please fill out a card that's in the uh, pew in front of you in the rack and leave it uh, in the offering envelope so we'll have a record of who you are and how to get in touch with you. Uh, right after worship today, there will be a children's family lunch and Easter egg hunt. All families that have registered, please head over to the fellowship hall after worship. If you're a guest with children, we also have a seat for you. Please plan to stay and enjoy with us today. Again, this is an event for families with children under fifth grade. We also want to thank our Children and Family Ministry Committee uh, for doing this and uh, their involvement and Su Suzette Mason for uh, being a part of that. On Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. here in the sanctuary is our Tina Bray service. Come and join us on this very reflective night. We will be led by our sanctuary choir and also serve the elements of the Lord's Supper to partake. Then next Sunday is Easter Sunday. All of those details are in your bulletin for next Sunday. I uh, saw something on Facebook this morning that I want to deviate and share just, um, just a little bit that uh, leave you a little food for thought or something to ponder. It says, you may be able to control every situation and you may not be able to control every situation and its outcome, but you can control your attitude and how you deal with it. And if we let the Lord Jesus Christ walk with us daily, we'll deal, deal with each of those situations the way that we, we should. Thank you and have a good day.
As we begin worship on this Palm Sunday, I would ask you to take your hymnal and turn to 175. I'm going to ask you to stay seated because our children are going to be processing with palms. <laughs>
Our hymns of praise this morning, number 176, with waving palms and shouts of praise. We will follow that with Let the Children Come to Me, and at that time, children come forward for the children's sermon. Please stand. group of kids. It doesn't get better than this for me. This morning I want to ask you a question. How many of you have ever been to a parade? Have you ever been to a parade? Has your family gone to a parade? What did you like or what did you see at the parade? What did you see, Val Vanessa? Victoria, I'm going to get your name right. Yeah, <laughs> my tongue is tied. What did you see at a parade? Oh, you saw Mickey at Disneyland. All right, what else? Yes, Daddy. Can you, what? Floats, absolutely, yes. All those characters. What other parades? Yeah. You did, okay. Yes, what did you see? What? Dancers. Good, yes, absolutely. What? 
The motor cars. Yeah, those are always fun to watch, aren't they? Yes. The clowns. Throwing candy. That's got to be a highlight. What else? You saw what? Drums. You're right. Musical instruments of all kind. Well, you know what? Yes. What you? Marching band. Yes. All those things. Well, you know what? What? You need to go to the bathroom? Okay, <laughs> grab my hand. Somebody's going to take you to the bathroom right this moment, my dear. Thank you for letting us know. When it all comes down to it, we know what's important, don't we? Well, boys and girls, you know what? The, most imp the biggest parade in the United States happens at Thanksgiving time, and it's the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. How many of you have ever watched it on TV or gone to it? You've heard about it. It is huge. Well, you know what? It is so popular, but I think that they, you're, it's historic, you're right. What? I also know one real fun fact about it. What's a fun fact about it? Has had a what? A Pikachu balloon. Very good, all right. Well, you know what? Today I want to tell you about the first parade. The very first one. And it's in the Bible. It's in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. What are those books called? Matthew, Mark, what? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The Gospels. Good job. The Gospels. And the story, which you probably heard in Sunday school today, and we're going to talk about it again. Because... Jesus was coming, and it was the time of the Passover feast. And he was coming into Jerusalem. And guess what? He didn't come on a float. He didn't come on a float. What did he come on? A donkey. He asked two of the disciples to go get him a donkey. And he did. And he came in, yes, Uh, you saw an angel in a parade. You are right. Those happen too. But at this parade, Jesus was coming on a donkey. And everybody was so excited. Ah, Jesus, their king, was coming. So they did everything they knew to do. They used everything they had. What did they put on the ground? Anybody know? Palms. They waved them. And what else? Cloth, their clothing, grass, okay. They put everything that they could on the ground. It was very colorful because they didn't put food on the ground because they were going to be eating that. But guess what they put? Yes. They did lay down their coats, and it was a colorful place for Jesus to come. And they were waving the palms, and they were saying... What? Hosanna. 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 What? Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And it wasn't just a little bit of people. It was people from far away and far off. But in one of those books in the Bible, in the book of Luke, it says that when all this was happening... The Pharisees. And they were kind of important people, but they liked to dress real fancy so they could be noticed. And they said, Jesus, stop the disciples from all of this. And Jesus said, if the people won't praise me and honor me, even the rocks will cry out. What did he mean by that? He meant, if the people... Don't worship me and praise me. All of nature, the ocean, the sky, the clouds, the rocks, everything will praise me and honor me. 
Yes. And you do wave flags at a parade. And we waved palm flags today, didn't we? Yes. Wow, that's pretty interesting about my rocks here, isn't it? If you move the wrong, wrong one, it all falls down, right? Yeah, you're, you're exactly right. Well, you know what? God wants us to know why we're made. So if you think about it, why in the world did God make us? Do you know what the Bible says? What? For Jesus. You were right, Natty. What? To make more disciples? God wants, yes, he wants us to follow him, doesn't he? He wants us to pray too, yes. Whoa, that's something to think about. You know what? I want us to think about why in the world are we here? Why are you here? You know what the Bible says? Jesus wants you to come to church so you can learn and you can pray. You are right. The Bible says that we were made to worship God. So we, you did worship today. We're worshiping through songs, through palm branches and everything. But if everything stopped, what did he say? Who would praise to him? What? The rocks, the, all of nature. But God says, guess what? You were made to worship the Lord. That's why you are here. Do you think that's worth celebrating? Yeah. I do. Easter. For Easter? That's right. But it is important, right? For you to know. Somebody might say, you know what? You're good at this. You're good at football. You're good at school. You're good at all these things. You were made to do that game, play that game. Guess what? You were made, first and foremost, to worship the Lord. So, if we had a parade today, you talked about some of the things you saw, but what if Jesus were coming today? What do you think we might have? What? A party. A party. Okay. Palm branches. Yep, what else? The world would end. <laughs> You're getting ahead of me, but I get it. You, yes. She said we could give him a, a donkey with a purple saddle. Purple does mean the king. Well, you know what? I decided as we celebrate today, we might need some what? Balloons. The J on my box is for, for what? For Jesus. We want to celebrate. You know what? We get to celebrate the fact that we are made to praise the Lord. And in our life, every single day, God wants us to praise him. We use everything that we had. Those people used everything that they had to praise him. And God wants us to do the same. And so this day, I'm going to use everything I have. I'm going to use everything I have. I'm going to use everything I have to praise and worship the Lord. Boys and girls, look at your hands. Look at your feet. You have a voice. You have arms. Your whole life, God says, I made you to do what? To worship me. I made you. So, guess what? I want you to say this three times. Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. One more time, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Let's pray. God, thank you for these children. Thank you for their hearts, their voices, their bright minds, all their thoughts. May we as adults continue to lead and direct 
and help them to grow closer to you. May each one of us in this room today be reminded we were made, we have been created to worship you. Thank you for this day, a day when we can lift your name on high. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you're going to wonder worship, go with Miss Amy. have the honor of going to that very king in prayer. Let us pray. Oh, Hosanna, Hosanna, we are so thankful for you because you are the king of kings. You are the Lord of lords. And we are thankful that we can enter into your very throne room right now to celebrate through the power of prayer your kingship. How you, Jesus, came. You came here to show us what it was like to live every day with our King, the Creator, our God. And then you made it. You sealed the deal on that very cross. 
That's not a way a king should go. That's not the way that the king should die. It should be one of honor, not one of persecution. It should be one of high status, not one that is beside two criminals. But oh no, you said that everything, everything that we put into your hands, everything that we lay at your feet, you will reign You will be that sovereign king that we need and know. Because you are all-knowing. You are all-giving, all-loving. And so you are the king of our lives when we say yes to you. You are the king of our situations. You are the king of our unknowns. You are the king of our diagnosis. You are the king of our treatments. You are the king of our surgeries. You are the king of our hospice. You are the king of our birth deliveries. You are the king of our marriages. You are the king of our children. You are the king of our church. You are the king of our community. You are the king of our lives when we say, Hosanna! We trust in you. And so we give this prayer to you now because we so desire as followers of Christ to say, you are the King of Kings. May we now serve you with such celebration and such trust that this prayer would come true. In Jesus' name, all his children said, Amen. Our hymn of reflection this morning is number 188, Man of Sorrows, What a Name. Please stand and sing. you give us each day. We know cheerful giving is not an obligation, but a joyful act of worship. Help us understand our giving is an expression of our deep love for you and our want to further your kingdom here on earth. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Stay standing for the reading of God's Word. Out of the Gospel of Luke, chapter 19, verses 28 through 35. After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead going up to Jerusalem. As he approached Bethphage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples saying to them, Go! And go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Say, the Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it just as he told them. As they were untying that very colt, its owners asked, Why are you untying the colt? And they replied, The the Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on that very colt, and put Jesus on it. And this, my friends, is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. I first have to say, don't you love Jesus? I mean, let me just ask again. Do you not love Jesus? I so love him. I so love him. And this very, very message here is the way that I want Jesus to start and continue to work in my life. Kristen, go to Food Lion. And there you will find a beautiful piece of ham for Easter. It has never been touched. It is pure and it is for you and your family only. And when the chef or the butcher says you can use a different ham that's cheaper, you say, no, Kristen needs this one. And go and take it home and eat. And it's plain as day of which ham I'm supposed to choose. Or when I go on the car lot, Kristen, pick this car. This is the car that I am leading you to. Or when I am moving about in the community, Kristen, go to this place. 
For the Lord is saying, I'm sending you there, and you are to have that connection. Oh, if Jesus could just obviously talk to us that way, how, how wonderful that would be. But here, we have, at the beginning of our Holy Week, a reflection that I wonder if the disciples said, whoa, whoa, whoa. didn't he mean a horse? I mean, he said a colt. A colt is a donkey. There's, there's no way he meant that, right? A horse is, is the one we should put Jesus on. He is one that has come, has taught us. We love him. You see movies and you read about his relationship with the disciples and they even write in first person or third person, Jesus, the one whom he loves. They knew that Jesus loved them as their followers. And they too loved Jesus and only wanted the best for him. So of course he misspoke when he said, go and find that colt. We should have Jesus own a horse as our king. But that's not the way that the week begins, which we call this week Holy Week. Instead, it is that of our very Jesus and his life ending by an arrest, being beaten, being crucified on a cross, and him dying. Today, our world would love and loves to continue to cancel history. It's, a, it's just a thing. We don't, we don't want to see and hear that. We want to soften the blow of history. Or say, no, there's no way people thought like that or acted like that. Let's don't even memorialize it like that anymore. But this is one historical event we cannot soften. This is one historical event we cannot forget. Because actually, it's the very entry of our Christian DNA. We, to have Christ live in us, choose to follow him by believing in such of a death. By believing that he died on a cross and there's no putting a soft blow to that. It was very, very cruel. And it was one that was the forgiveness of our sins. And that's not even the end of the story. Even many Jewish scholars believed that there was a Messiah that would suffer and there was a Messiah that would conquer. Jesus came to do both. He suffered and he conquered. So my question today would be, well then why did he not ride in on a horse? Why was he not treated like royalty as we have witnessed today at the beginning of our service celebrating a time of excitement, a time of honor? Well, to know that, you must connect back to biblical history. And if you read about the very prophet Zechariah, you will read that he once proclaimed this. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, behold, because your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation. He is so humble. And he is mounted on a donkey, on a colt, that of a donkey. Here we have in these words of Zechariah, where you can read the difference in the very thing that the king rides in on. He doesn't proclaim that it would be a horse. He proclaims it would be a donkey, that of a colt. He doesn't proclaim it would be one of royalty. And if we are not educated, that's what we can miss today on Palm Sunday. Because actually, by the king riding in on a colt and not featured on a horse or even a chariot, the king is clearly stating he is not coming in a military context. 
Actually, in ancient Middle Eastern world, leaders rode horses if they were ready for war. But leaders would ride in on donkeys if they were ready to show peace. And that, my friends, is what the prophecy is all about. Jesus entered into Jerusalem not ready for war. He was ready to show those very people what it meant to have peace. An everlasting peace. And he enters into Jerusalem showing not only the peace by riding on a donkey, but the humility that we are all going to be commanded to have as well. The righteousness that he would bring to make it right in living with God. And then salvation for us all. So actually, I do not believe the disciples ever questioned if he should have been on a horse. Because every day they were with Jesus and they learned more and more that this was not a man of war. This was a man of peace. So if that's the case, if that's the case for us, then how do we learn about Palm Sunday today in our very walk with Jesus as we enter this precious week of the Christian liturgical year? And that is that Zechariah continued prophesying by saying, this king will take away the war chariot of Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the bow of war will be broken, and he will speak words of peace to all the nations. And his dominion shall be from sea to sea, meaning absolutely endless, and from the river Euphrates to the ends of the earth. So not only does he come own a donkey to symbolize peace as he rides into Jerusalem. He also takes away the chariots. There's no chariots on this donkey. So that's an end to the main vehicle of war. He also takes away the war horse by riding in on a donkey, so no need to show it's war. He also has the battle bow that will be broken because we will no longer need bows and arrows for fighting. He will proclaim peace to the nations because his message is that of reconciliation. And he will rule from sea to sea because the king of kings is in control, extended territory with no enemies of concern. He has no enemies of concern. The day he was on the cross, he had no enemies of, the con of concern. And the day he lives with us today, he has no enemies of concern because he is the king of kings. And Jesus fulfilled that very prophecy, that very claim of Zechariah, the worldview of peace, proclaiming that humble king. And do you know why I say he was on a donkey to bring in peace? Because just three months ago, December, from this pulpit, we all celebrated because we heard an angel say, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. But there is a king that will be coming one day on a horse. And that is stated as the second coming of cross. Christ. Revelation 19 does say, I saw heaven standing open and there before me was a white horse whose rider is called Faithful and True. With justice he judges and makes war. So Jesus will not be coming back on a donkey. He has left the donkey here in representation of what he rode in and what we focus on today to say, I have come into this world to bring peace. I mean, listen to all the notes that was just made this week about peace. John 14, 27, 
He says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. He's an agent of peace. Isaiah prophesied, you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. Peter wrote, cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you, meaning he's the agent of peace. The psalmist said, in peace I will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make me dwell in your safety. In Romans, it talks about that therefore, since we have been justified through faith, guess what we have with God through our Lord Jesus Christ? Peace. The psalmist also said that great peace have those who love your law and nothing can make them stumble. In Colossians, as we were looking at that on Wednesday nights, we read about how we need to let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts since we are members of one body and you were called to peace, it says. So be thankful. Peace used twice there in Colossians 3. And then what a great powerful benediction when we say, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him so that you may overflow with help by the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus came in Jerusalem as an agent of peace not an agent of war. And those very people that celebrated him that day are the very people that we will learn about at our Tenebrae service because things change this week. For some reason, he's no longer treated like a king, but instead a criminal. But I want you to know that when he comes back on that second coming, It will no longer be that he comes in that peace and on that peace. He's giving us every opportunity right now. But instead, he has justice to judge. And with his eyes like blazing fire, and on his head there will be many crowns, he will come And he will have a name written on him that no one knows but he himself. Because he will be dressed in a robe dipped in blood. And his name is the word of God. And listen to this. There will be armies of heavens, armies of heaven that will follow him riding also on white horses. And they will be dressed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth comes a sharp sword with such to strike down the nations that he will rule them with an iron scepter. And on his robe and on his thigh he will have the name King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Our King of Kings that we celebrate today did not come in on a horse Because he did not enter for war. He is one we can love and live in his peace. And just like last week where we talked about mental health and the power of him being an agent of hope. When other people, when uh, when people get on the other side of that mental health, they experience Jesus' peace. So may we celebrate and reflect this week as we prepare for another Sunday of celebration where my Sunday sermon is entitled to be announced. Let us pray. Father, we do thank you. We thank you so much that you came in on a donkey now that we understand what that actually means. That you came in Jerusalem your very last week showing people without even saying the words that you are the agent of peace. And thanks to you entering that, in that measure, in that manner, spending that time with your disciples, 
even during your arrest, you showed peace. Oh, Father, we know before we get to next Sunday, we have to walk through the garden. We walk through the upper room. We walk through the arrest and the awful beatings of you during your trial. Jesus, we will walk through you having to carry your own cross only to convict us of what that actually means when you ask us to carry ours as well. And then you will be lifted up. But we have an announcement that's to come. And we look forward to what that announcement will be at this time next week. As we thank you for being our King of Kings and our Lord of Lords. We give this to you now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And so we do have to go through Holy Week. We cannot erase this history. We cannot soften the blow. But we can accept. We can embrace. And we can live with Jesus' peace. So today, if you are ready to say yes to that agent of peace, I invite you to come to me and let us pray with excitement. I will lead you in a prayer where you can say, I too love Jesus. And I want that Prince of Peace in my life. Or maybe you're ready to say, I am ready for baptism. The waters of baptism are ready for you. And then this church is amazing. You think this is a party. You should go look at our fellowship hall. Living life together is a journey where we get to celebrate together and pray together. You were never created to be an island. You were created for community. Come join our church. Come be a part of this amazing family where we get to benefit from your gifts too. Whatever the decision is, I will be here at the front and I will be ready to embrace you as we stand and we sing hymn number 180, Go to Dark Gethsemane. Let us stand and worship. these words for our benediction. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in very nature, God did not consider equality 
with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, making the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself, became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Excellent.